Welcome and thank you for joining us. Today we will be discussing the role of fidaxomycin in the treatment of Clostridium difficile infection. This podcast is graciously sponsored by Optimer Pharmaceuticals and will be presented by Dr. Sally Alraba. Dr. Alraba is an assistant professor of medicine with the Division of Infectious Disease and International Medicine at the University of South Florida Morsani College of Medicine. Thank you. Welcome and thank you for joining us. Let me start by a brief review of Clostridium difficile associated infection or CDI. CDI is among the leading causes of hospital acquired infections and is particularly difficult to treat. CDI mostly affects the gastrointestinal tract and is known for its tendency to recur and cause significant morbidity and mor mortality in certain patient populations, especially the elderly, the immune compromised, such as those on immunosuppressive medications or with an immunocompromising disorder such as cancer, autoimmune disease, chronic renal insufficiency, or organ transplant recipients and those with prior history of CDI. A key factor in the pathogenesis of CDI is the disruption of the normal colonic microbiota, which is a major host defense system, by antibiotics or by antineoplastic agents with antibacterial activity that facilitates colonization with toxigenic Clostridium difficile. Then elaboration of toxins A and B mediate psychoskeletal derangement in target cells, resulting in mucosal injury and inflammation and hence the symptomatology of CDI. Also, more recently, a highly virulent strain have emerged. It's known as the North American Pulsed Field Type 1 strain. This strain is associated with increased morbidity and mortality. Regarding the diagnosis of CDI, one must maintain a high clinical suspicion, especially in patients uh, who develop diarrhea after receiving antibiotics within the previous two months or whose diarrhea begins 72 hours after hospitalization. Regarding laboratory use, traditionally tests aim to detect the toxins, like the PCR assays, the EIA, immunoassay, tissue toxin assay, or tests that aim to detect the organism, such as the GDH, antigen detection test, and bacterial culture. In general, toxin detecting tests are more sensitive, specific, and are more useful clinically than tests that aim to detect the organism. Perhaps the most important uh, step in the treatment of CDI is cessation of the offending antibiotic if possible. Traditionally, the first episode of CDI, if mild, is treated with oral metronidazole, although this drug was never approved for such use. In 1986, oral vancomycin was approved for use in CDI. Despite that, relapse rates for CDI remain high at about 20 to 25 percent. In May of 2011 and 25 years after vancomycin approval, a macrolide antibiotic, which is fedaxomycin, designed to target Clostridium difficile bacteria was FDA approved for CDI treatment. This represents a breakthrough in CDI treatment. Fedaxomycin or deficit is a narrow spectrum macrolide antibiotic designed by Optima Pharmaceuticals to target Clostridium difficile bacteria. The drug is bactericidal against Clostridium difficile as it inhibits its RNA polymerase. Being narrow spectrum, it spares the other bacteria of the gastrointestinal tract, which is an essential element in controlling Clostridium difficile and in prevention of its recurrence. Fedaxomycin has minimal systemic absorption and high fecal concentration, making it favorable to treat CDI. Initial studies indicated that it's more active in vitro than vancomycin. Subsequent clinical trials have shown that the rates of CDI clinical cure after treatment with fedaxomycin were non inferior to those after treatment with vancomycin. Fedaxomycin, however, was associated with a significantly lower rate of recurrence of C. difficile infection associated with the non North American pulsed field type 1 strains. This really represents a huge advantage of this drug compared to vancomycin. This graph illustrates the findings by Louis et al. in a study published in the New England Journal of Medicine in 2011 comparing fedaxomycin to vancomycin in CDI treatment. Fedaxomycin is represented by the dark blue color and vancomycin by the lighter blue color. If you notice to the left-hand side, the clinical cure is comparable in the two groups. 
treated with fedaxomycin and uh, vancomycin, as well as the right side shows global cure, which is compatible between the two drugs. Looking at the center area of the graph, Fedaxomycin distinguishes itself with the significantly lower rate of recurrences of diarrhea uh, as compared to vancomycin. Regarding the prescribing information for fedaxomycin, it is indicated for the treatment of C. difficile diarrhea in adults 18 years or older with an initial episode or a relapse. The dose is 200 mg orally twice a day with or without food for 10 days. The medication is metabolized through the liver and no renal adjustment of dose is necessary. Fedaxomycin is pregnancy category B. And in general, fedaxomycin is well tolerated and the side effects uh, are minimal. In conclusion, uh, things to remember about uh, this new drug is that it is the first bactericidal medication to be approved for the use specifically in CDI. The narrow spectrum of activity of fedaxomycin spares the GI flora other than Clostridium difficile and therefore addresses the major problem behind CDI. Fedaxomycin is equally efficacious in comparison to vancomycin in the treatment of CDI but distinguishes itself by significantly reducing the rate of recurrence, which is a major challenge for CDI treatment. Fedaxomycin should be considered first-line therapy in patients with CDI who are at high risk of recurrence, and it certainly is a preferred option in patients with recurrent CDI. For further information regarding fedaxomycin use, the listener may visit the website www.deficit.com. This concludes this podcast. Thank you.